<clears throat> Dear colleagues, we are happy to welcome you to this webinar, Titanium, the revolutionary step in AFM design, sponsored by NTMDT. My name is Stanislav Lesman, and I will be moderating today's event from our Moscow head office. Today we have truly intercontinental format of the webinar. Our two speakers will be my colleague from Limerick, Ireland, Alana Carty, the head of our marketing department, and Dr. Sergei Maganov from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, Dr. Maganov uh, received a doctorate in physics and mathematics from the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. Sergei has published over 200 peer-reviewed papers, one book and 15 book chapters. He is now CEO of NTMDT Development, an R&D division that was established for the development of novel experimental techniques and applications capabilities using NTMDT microscopes. During the webinar, you can send us your questions via chat window of GoToWeb panel, which you can see at your desktop. After talks, we'll have questions and answers session. Please don't hesitate to use this option. So I will hand over to Alana. Alana, you are on air. Thank you very much, Stanislav. Uh, as Stanislav said, my name is Alana Carty, and I look after marketing for the United States, Europe, Middle East, and Africa at NTMDT. Today, we're going to be presenting the launch of the new AFM device from us. It's called Titanium. In the first part of the webinar, I'm going to present the revolutionary development in AFM technology. It's an amazing new multi-probe cartridge, which enables the user to carry out fully automated cantilever exchanges. The second part of the webinar, which will be headed up by Dr. Sergei Maganov, will be devoted to the unique performance capabilities and specific application examples of the Titanium AFM. On the slide you can see on your screens now, this shows you um, exactly the key features of Titanium, which will be covered in the webinar today. In order to really understand the innovative solutions within Titanium AFM, we're going to look at the typical operations which every AFM user has to complete before running any AFM experiment. First of all, obviously, you have the cantilever handling and installation with the subsequent alignment of the optical beam deflection system, both the laser and the photodiode. Needless to say, as I'm sure many of you appreciate on the call, um, they take certain practical skills from the system user. In addition, they also take a considerable amount of time in preparation prior to generating any AFM imaging. It's a fantastic advantage if, like titanium, the instrument has automated alignment, but you still have the issue of manual probe loading um, and the exchange of probes, and that can remain a headache and a drain on the user's time. Another thing that the user has to really understand and properly adjust is the imaging mode. Every modern high-end atomic force microscope has a large variety of imaging modes, and on this slide you can see those that are used most often. Within titanium, there are 60 different modes available. So therefore, when you've got that array of modes to use, how do you select the most suitable mode for your sample? Then you have the question of how you select the most suitable cantilever for the mode that you've employed, and then also the, the most suitable cantilever for the particular sample that you're looking at. In order to answer those questions and simplify the operation of the AFM device, NTMDT have developed a revolutionary solution to address those needs. This revolutionary development is fully based on an automated head that has a revolving system operating a multi-probe AFM cartridge. This cartridge includes a massive array of 38 AFM cantilevers. The fully automated laser photodiode alignment and probe exchange enables continuous AFM operation without the tedious and, quite frankly, often frustrating interruptions for the manual probe exchange and tweaking of the system. This revolution head is fully con controlled by the proprietary NTMDT imager software, which enables not only extremely fast access to all 38 probes without any manual operations or disturbing your operational conditions, but it also automatically selects the most suitable cantilever on the cartridge and the appropriate imaging mode based on your sample's parameters. Sorry, just Excuse me. Um, just to review very quickly the imager software, it's actually an AFM wizard which provides the results through three extremely simple steps. Firstly, you set up your sample. Then you allow the system to select and recognize the appropriate probe, align the laser and photodiode, 
tune resonance, pre-engage, and then focus on the sample. Secondly, you can choose your region of interest using the optical image. You let the system then run a gentle engagement procedure and adjust the fee feedback parameters. Three, simply run AFM. It makes the operation of titanium with the revolution cartridge head even easier and allows the researcher to focus just on the results. I'm going to show you a short video now. There's also a link in case um, you can't see it on your screen, so you can go back and have a look at it later on. So if I just run this now for you. In the video, you can see how the device works in real time. You can see how the revolution head actually selects the required cantilever tip on the multiprobe cartridge by means of turning the revolving mechanism. Then the instrument makes a full alignment of the beam deflection, resonance frequency tuning, approach, and all other operations uh, in order to continue the imaging. When you look at this, the complete process should take around 30 seconds from stopping one scan and starting a new one. So it's actually been quite difficult for me to read that in the 30 seconds allowed. The multi-probe cartridge is actually based on a very unique fabrication technology. We're currently developing cartridges with a variety of different cantilevers, a choice of coatings, and resonant frequency. This enables the use of different imaging modes, such as conductive AFM or magnetic force microscopy, without the manual replacement of a probe. And on the slide I'm showing you here, on the left-hand side, you can see an image of the fabricated cartridges. And on the right-hand side, you can see electron microscopy images of the cartridge at the top, and then at the bottom, a zoomed image of each individual tip. In order for us to prevent the possible mishandling and make the, the uh, cartridge installation procedure accessible to everyone, we've actually developed a special fixing tool that you can see here on the left-hand side. So when you compare this to the traditional uh, single-use cantilevers, which usually require tweezers for installation and extremely careful and tricky manipulations, we've significantly simplified the procedure of probe loading. And also, you know, just an important to, to not forget throughout this presentation, once the, the cartridge probe is installed, you have 38 probes then already loaded onto your AFM. So the benefits of using the multi-probe cartridge, obviously the 38 tips um, provide you with continuous system use without any, without any manual probe exchange. The fact that the automated tip exchange is so fast means it saves a lot of time between measurements. And I expect, um, like in any business, you know, time is money at universities and, and research institutions. The full, fully automated alignment enables easy system operation regardless of the skill level of the operator. And the safe cartridge installation ensures that you have minimal mishandling risk. The choice of coatings or stiffness on the single cartridge probe allows for operation in a variety of Im imaging modes without any probe exchange. There's also minimal stabilization time because we don't interrupt op operational conditions for the manual probe exchange. So the instrument is always in optimal imaging conditions right after you've selected the new probe on the cartridge. Of course, titanium isn't limited to just using the revolution cartridge. There is a second head provided or, or can be chosen uh, for traditional single cantilevers. This probe holder would be um, compatible with most commercially available probes and both heads are replaceable from the microscope base, so you can operate them on your desktop uh, for more convenience uh, for the user. Besides the AFM heads for single probes that's always included in the package and the Revolution cartridge available for multi-probe cartridges, there are optional units and accessories available within the titanium AFM in order for you to expand the image and application capabilities. That would be such as liquid, liquid cell, STM head, heating stage, and nano indentation modules. So after this brief introduction that I provided for the new titanium microscope that we're very excited about and the fantastic revolutionary technology, our new uh, Revolution 38 Pro cartridge head, I now have the sincere pleasure of passing over to Dr. Sergei Maganov, who will share his experience of actually using the titanium in different applications and also review the performance capability of NTMDT's titanium with you. Thank you for your time today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentation. Uh, thank you, Alana. And now we're switching to the second part of our presentation, and I'm uh, 
handing over to Dr. Sergey Maganov. Uh, Sergey, you are on air. Thank you, Stas. And I hope you see my first slide. Yes, yes, you can. Uh, Very good. Uh, you can full, full screen it. Yes, I will do. Okay. I can I can start. Dear webinar attendees, today I am presenting uh, scanning probe microscope titanium. This is a new development of NTMDT company. And the agenda of my presentation includes several blocks, <laughs> with first three describing advanced application common to these microscopes. This application includes high resolution imaging, local electric study, and quantitative nanomechanical studies, primarily with a non resonant oscillatory hybrid mode. And at the last block, I will uh, again give you some uh, information regarding the revolution head and the tips used for the operation of this mode. This is my agenda, which I just mentioned. And uh, let's go further. Uh, I have some uh, one introductory slides, and this is one. In general, the experiment in atomic force microscopy is application of one of several modes, which are presented on the left. Um, and the, the goal is to perform uh, different type of characterizations, which are listed on the right. Uh, particularly, I would like to underline that the compositional imaging of multi-component materials, which is uh, in atomic force microscopy, is based either on specific shape or dimension of the components, or on their different local mechanical, electric, or thermal properties. And uh, that kind of characterization, which is particularly important in industrial application, has, uh, can be more specific, chemically specific and powerful, if we'll consider the FM combination with spectroscopical methods such as Raman scattering, which is also realized in uh, our microscopes. Coming back to the general view on the FM characterization, we admit that the practical implementation of the microscope and harvesting of the results proceed with the help of an operator who applies a number of procedures which are outlined in the center of this slide. And as uh, Alan already mentioned, one of the basic steps is loading and liming uh, the single prop. And that's why we get, as a practitioners, we get a, a really help from the multi prop cartridge, which can be used as a revolution ahead. And uh, in this case, uh, the system enables automatic tip uh, probe exchange, positioning, alignment of the probe, and that's I, become a very exciting feature of the new microscope, uh, increasing the throughput of your studies. Uh, let's uh, describe some uh, features of the titanium scanning probe microscope, which are uh, let's say the microscope combines industry-leading specification, and with the additionally we have a revolution, a revolution head which enable automatic, automated experiments. The use of the titanium microscope has access to most complete set of IFM modes, including non-resonance, oscillatory hybrid mode, and as well as single and double pass electric modes which uh, is possible with these uh, additional lacins which we are using. That's uh, provide people also s with possibility to multi-frequency studies. And uh, again, I uh, underlining that the combination of these multimodal capabilities and uh, automated means is really advances the uh, experiment in anatomic force microscopy. Now we can start with one of that uh, uh, application. Uh, this is regarding the high resolution imaging. Visualization of atomic scale structures is one of the most exciting application of scanning, uh, tunneling microscopy, and scanning atomic force microscopy. And this actually attracted a lot of researchers to these techniques. And uh, as I understand, the, the audience is also <laughs> is a part of this process. <laughs> Despite on uh, almost 30 years history of such application, many aspects of such imaging, different environment, ultra-high vacuum, 
or air or liquid are still not clarified and there is uh, definitely a room for further improvements. There are a number of factors contributing to atomic to capability to do atomic and molecular uh, resolution studies at ambient condition or in liquid and many of these uh, requirements are listed in the slides which you see now. Here I want to emphasize one of them, thermal drift of the microscope because this feature is important one that enable continuous visualization of atomic and molecular uh, scale structures in the successive images. <coughs> we have succeeded in fighting with the thermal drift by placing the microscope in the thermally stable cabinet in which the temperature of the microscope is kept constant at slightly higher level around 3 degrees centigrade higher than the ambient temperature. On this slide you have a couple of graphs which show the temporal plots for room and microscope frame temperatures and uh, I would uh, like to uh, put your attention on first on the top graphs where we see that the room temperature oscillates with the help of the air conditioning uh, in the range of 2 to 2.5 uh, degree centigrade. That's quite uh, abnormal conditions, but you know, in Arizona it uh, uh, might uh, happen often. And the second data showing that the uh, graphs for the more uh, comfortable conditions in the room when the temperature varied uh, within the one or one and a half degrees. But in both cases, you see the graphs above this. Uh, room temperature graphs, you see the graphs of the microscope frame and that is most important what we achieved that the variation of the microscope temperature is uh, really go to very small numbers. The external uh, temperature variation are silence uh, with our setup and what we see the uh, variation in the temperature become very small within uh, 0 0.1 degree. And uh, these conditions are most favorable for high resolution imaging in most AFM modes. Now this slide show you uh, how really this, what means one, 0 0.1 degree thermal stability means for the imaging uh, and here well, there are two sequences of the uh, of six height images having uh, either 100 nanometer on side and this is a top or top row or 200 nanometers on side size this is the bottom row. These images uh, were obtained on self assemblies of semi fluorinated alkanes on the graphite and, and mica. One can see for example <coughs> in the top Sorry, in the top sequence that uh, local bright contrast defect in top images uh, is practically immobile for the period of almost one hour. The same is true, the same is true for spiral like self assembly in the bottom images, which also doesn't move much from the your view area uh, within the hour. The estimated uh, show that the thermal drift uh, for these sequences is below 0.2 nanometer per minute. Now we can uh, come, this was like 100 nanometer scale, 200 nanometer scale. What's happening at the same conditions at smaller scales? Here I will give you the uh, contact mode images obtained on mica which is uh, for many of us a standard sample to illustrate uh, the atomic scale resolution and atomic force microscopy. <coughs> you see here first a sequence of four successive pairs of height and lateral force images with uh, 8 nanometers on site. Uh, first I would like to underline the high quality of this and other images in next slides uh, which eliminate the need of the Fourier transform filtering which is commonly applied to emphasize the periodical pattern of atomic scale FM images. Second, uh, if you look on two of these images uh, from this series, two of the images collected in one scanning direction and, and two in the other one, 
One can see still uh, small uh, image deviations which are related to the remnants on thermal drift. Anyhow, the high quality of the images allow examining the atomic scale features, like one emphasized in the 5 nanometer on site height and lateral force images on the bottom right. The height image mimics the crystallographic structure of mica, which is shown on the sketch at the bottom. The lateral force pattern indicates that the lateral force is elevated in the location of atomic scale cavities. And I will also tell you that this uh, repeat distance for these structures for mica is around 5.2 angstrom. That's pretty uh, kind of big, uh, but we can deal with a smaller one <coughs> as well. Smaller lattices are presented in the other layered materials such as HOPG or highly oriented pyrolytical graphite and tungsten deselenate. The honeycomb atomic structure of HOPG layer is uh, has spacing of 1.46 uh, and the 2.46, this is between the uh, neighboring and also between the every uh, second uh, atoms of the honeycomb lattice. And in STM and IFM images, <coughs> sorry, the three of these six honeycomb atoms are shown typically mostly, and the spacing of this pattern around 2.46 angstrom between that, uh, three, uh, between each of three, between pairs of three of these uh, honeycomb atoms. This is seen in three successive images of HOPG, where slight variation again, depending on scanning uh, direction, is still uh, present. In tungsten selenide to a layered material. The top surface has a closed hexagonal lattice formed by uh, selen atoms uh, with spacing of 3.2 angstrom. This pattern is almost perfectly reproduced in the height and lateral force images of 10 nanometer on side, which are shown on the left bottom. Again, small changes variation depending on scanning direction. I notice in successive images of 2.5 angstrom on side, which are shown on the right bottom. <coughs> uh, the atomic scale imaging uh, in a stellatorium mode is more difficult than in contact mode, but it uh, still can be achieved with titanium microscope, as we'll see in the next examples. Uh, this first example is the crystal of TTFTCNQ. This is an organic conductor, and whose lattice is nicely seen in the contact mode images. Uh, this is three images on the, in the top row. The same lattice and few defects is also detected in the amplitude modulation mode uh, image, which, uh, images which are on the bottom row. Also, <coughs> the quality of these images need to be further improved, but uh, particularly was probably using extremely sharper probes. Here I was noting that the images I'm showing so far, and all atomic scale images and sh few uh, next images, they all obtained with a regular continuous, which uh, has apex in the range of 10 or uh, 15 nanometers. The part related to this uh, high resolution image will complete by showing the amplitude modulation images of uh, polytetrafluoroethylene film, which is deposited on a glass substrate by hot rubbing. The sample is different from the crystal and have various morphological elements, including the molecular oriented layers. And <laughs> on the left, you see this couple of morphological uh, images, and you see that there are the ribbons, that ribbons with the atomically um, ordered uh, polymer chains, and uh, for example, on the 100 nanometer image on the bottom left, you see that the several steps between this layers and they're equal uh, to the size or to the, to the radius of the Teflon uh, poly polyethylene terephthalate molecules around 0.5 nanometers. On the right, <laughs> I show you what can be achieved in the condition of low thermal drift then you can scan, for example, area of 100 nanometers on side, 
uh, with a very high density of points. This is 1k by 1k points and it was 1 hertz rate. And if you clearly, you see that everywhere you see tiny uh, polymer chains with a separation around 5.6 angstrom in between. Of course, <laughs> you can zoom. <coughs> I can see now with the regular 512 by 512 uh, pixel size the images of these individual chains and here several of them. Uh, on the left two 10 nanometer and 5 nanometer images you see the edges of these ribbons which form by Teflon chain and on the right image you see defects in this layer, uh, the kind of edge defects on the bottom left. That's, uh, uh, I think by that we will uh, finish with this uh, molecular resolution and go further <coughs> to studies of the local electric measurements in the AFM. On this uh, introductory slides are uh, showing all different electric modes which can be realized in titanium microscope and this is modes related to the uh, different uh, FM modes, contact hybrid mode, amplitude modulation mode. Also on the bottom we see that uh, one of the uh, schematics how we using different uh, lacins, additional lacins uh, to detect in, in addition to topography this FS potential or uh, gradients of the capacitor nice the DCDZ or DCDB and uh, use that uh, for our purposes. And I will give you mm, three examples. Uh, if you want to look for more examples, you can uh, go to our website and find my previous webinar, which was in the end of uh, January, which completely uh, devoted to the different uh, examples of the local electric studies. Here we can consider a couple of recent data I accumulated and uh, <coughs> first uh, material which we often look, this is a fluoral cane molecules uh, on mica. These molecules, uh, there are schematics showing on the right top, they have fluorinated blocks and, and the hydrogenated blocks and uh, uh, it's interesting that uh, it has a strong dipole moment. Uh, oriented along the chain around 3 dBi and this is actually responsible for the surface potential oration which we see in the Kelvin force microscopy images. This is on the uh, top two images, 700 nanometer images and you see here that we see <coughs> spiral like uh, self assemblies of the fluoral canes there around 4 nanometer. Uh, in height and the surface potential show that there are abrupt changes of surface potential from the uh, surrounding when you come to the uh, spirals and that around one volt. That's because of this high molecular uh, high dipole and uh, because in these structures the dipole, the molecules are oriented preferentially vertical that we have the strong surface potential change. Also, of course, it's interesting to go to the smaller scale as, as, as usual with AFM and here I give you one example on 200 nanometer scale where we also in addition to the uh, measuring the surface potential value we also see that there are two regions where uh, in between the uh, donut like structures and you see that we on the surface potential cross section on the right, you see that the uh, with sensitive uh, to the changes or very, on a very small scale, I think this is a few nanometer and this is uh, showing that even detection of particular surface potential in single pass uh, mode is uh, provide you high special resolution. Now in, we can go further. Now the same uh, material but deposited on uh, HUPG or highly oriented paralytical graphite. In this case, 
the one <coughs> self-assemblies, not only the uh, ribbons, but there are also the lamella structures. And you see these two regions on the on the sample on 700 nanometer scale. And then if you zoom to 200 nanometer scale, you clearly see the six nanometer, six and a half nanometer lamellas, which are uh, vertically oriented on the left and a couple of a few ribbons. And again, in the ribbons, the molecule oriented more or less vertically. And in the case of the uh, lamellas, we see that the molecules lying uh, along the substrate. Therefore, the, uh, these two different molecular orientation uh, give uh, the reason why the surface potential in the image uh, uh, is changing on the border between these two type of the uh, self-assemblies. And again, this is a change just around point uh, 0.6 volts. Additionally, uh, because again, in the condition of the low thermal drift, we can go on smaller scale and stay and, and do all this observation on very small scale. And this is shown by examples on the left bottom. This is the area of 100 nanometer on site. And where we see that uh, the risk contrast is not so high, because as I mentioned, in this case, molecule oriented more or less uh, uh, along the uh, surface or parallel to the surface. Therefore, the uh, interlamella uh, spacings have some contrast, but not a big one. But also, we see a couple, two or three uh, spots where there are some additional charges, which are uh, seen in surface potential image, but not uh, uh, practically not seen in the height image. But again, this uh, shows that we can do measurements on the local electric properties on a relatively small scale of few nanometers. And that uh, can be very useful for characterization of different material. Now we can go further. And in this case, we switch from the low molecular uh, low molecular weight compounds to the polymers. And I give you two examples. One example, uh, both are immiscible polymer blends. One is a film of the SPS and polyvinyl uh, poly fluoride blend. And another is blend of the atactic polystyrene with polyvinyl state. In the first case, the three images on the top, we see that uh, PBDF uh, phase, they are uh, more easily crystallizable compared to the semi-crystallized detectic polystyrene. And they form three small islands inside of the layer, which is uh, of uh, synthetic polystyrene. Again, we see variation not only in the height. We also see the contrast, both in the surface potential and uh, the CDZ images. And this is the uh, capacitance gradient, which is related to the variation of the uh, local electric permittivity of the materials. And again, in the previous webinar, you can find on our website, you can see how we can, uh, in several cases, from DCDZ maps, we can uh, get quantitative data about the polymer electric permittivity. But here I want to emphasize that the variation of the contrast in, uh, of surface potential image is related to the fact that in uh, fluorinated uh, PBDF, there are more dipoles, and they can be responsible for the pronounced contra surface uh, potential variation. And in the case of the DCDZ map, of course, uh, the reason is of contrast. One of the reasons, at least, that the uh, the electric permittivity of these two polymers is uh, also different, and that's around 2 for uh, polystyrene and around 7 for PBDF. <laughs> that's more or less easy way to uh, example of the compositional imaging. Life sometimes is much more complicated. And this is example of the thick uh, film of the polystyrene PIVAC. And uh, you see here, there are high surface potential two gradient images. But surface potential is not so uh, good. And it just show only some hints that the uh, depressions in the height image, they can be assigned uh, to the PIVAC component. And uh, 
<coughs> this idea comes from the considerations in the film where we more sure about the uh, phase separation plus on this thin film we already succeeded to do a combination of the uh, IFM with confocal Raman and that gives us additional additional support. Here is also because you see in DCDZ and DCDV uh, maps we have a lot of the contrast not everything understand understandable because <laughs> there are contributors of the top layer, contributors from the uh, bulk of the system, and therefore, therefore, sometimes it's not enough IFM that you can kind of need to combine with the, uh, let's say, confocal Raman studies where you can see or can collect information from, uh, let's say, from uh, the thicknesses of uh, around uh, 400 uh, nanometers and, and that kind will provide you the means for comprehensive uh, compositional mapping using not only FM but its combination with spectroscopy. Now we can go further and I uh, need to tell you something about what we do in the case of non mechanical studies with the uh, our uh, titanium microscope and uh, I would like to say you that uh, non mechanical measurements is uh, typically done either through IFM based on the indentation, and this is just a sketch on the top showing that we go in with the tip and um, uh, indent the sample and uh, looking on the deflection, deflection versus uh, distance curve, which uh, slopes are related to the stiffness and the kind of attractive. Uh, wells are uh, related to some uh, adhesive interaction and so on. This is one way and second way is just using this non resident hybrid mode. <coughs> Here is also the schematics of this mode but it's important we can uh, watch for the temporal signals of the uh, of the deflection on the motion of the sample as well. Typically we do moving the sample underneath the cantilever and watching for deflection of the probe also that from these temporal graphs you can get again the familiar already the uh, deflection versus distance curve and uh, we're using that both techniques for a while and then the, on the uh, right side you see the uh, <coughs> results obtained with this mode and these results were calculated offline. It means we are getting this uh, deflection versus the distance curve and then applying uh, some uh, procedures uh, to uh, retrieve the elastic models and work of adhesion from that force curves and we've done that for several polymers which are listed here and you see the, the models value which we deduct from this hybrid and IFM indentation they similar, quite similar, even uh, we expect maybe sometimes more difference because important thing that the time constant for these measurements in uh, FM based indentation that's a little bit slower around let's say around one, one hertz and hybrid mode we do uh, from 0.5 to let's say 5 kilohertz. But <coughs> what advantage the titanium microscope uh, gives us in this case that with this microscope we're also providing the online quantitative mapping on the work of adhesion and elastic modulus and using all uh, more or less known modes like uh, Hertz, GKR or, or even um, uh, Hertz, DMT and even GKR. Okay, now <coughs> I'm sorry Oh, okay. Uh, okay, it's uh, it's night time in Arizona now, so maybe some uh, alert. Uh, this some time. Time. <laughs> no, yeah. no. I, okay, now that's fine. Yeah. Nobody are uh, trying to get me, but <laughs> okay, I'm back. Okay, look for go further. Sorry. Uh, okay, now I will uh, show you.
a couple of examples. First examples, this is the uh, images of uh, low density polyethylene block, which we obtained with the silicon probe having tip radius around 30 nanometers and stiffness around uh, 8 uh, newton of meter, which was uh, determined as using thermosune uh, technique. Uh, the sample topography reveals uh, small uh, edge on lamellas. One of that was indicated with the error. And uh, you see here, we show, uh, show the side-by-side -side adhesion and work of adhesion and stiffness and uh, elastic modulus maps. Why I do so? Because typically, at the beginning, people were doing adhesion, adhesion measurements by the uh, size of the well, and stiffness is the slope of the deflection curve. But uh, now we can get simultaneously work of adhesion, which come from the calculation with the particular, uh, in this case, DMT model, and uh, we add the modulus. Uh, you see, contrast is not much different in that uh, between adhesion, work of adhesion, stiffness, and modulus, but the useful thing that, in, of course, in the modulus map, you know, the, the variation of the modulus in this case was around 300, 400 megapascal variation. And uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, definite improvements uh, compared to the, uh, to the stiffness and which give you some contrast for good for composition imaging. Uh, now I can give you another example. In this case, uh, this is the arrays of uh, brush uh, macromolecules, which are deposited on mica. This is a sample from my former colleague, Sergei Sheiko. And uh, here is interesting. First, there is a block of five images obtained in the hybrid mode. But also, I, I took on the same location images, the amplitude modulation mode. And you see height image of amplitude modulation mode has less features than the height in the uh, height image in the hybrid mode. And that the uh, reason is that in hybrid mode, forces are much stronger. And uh, the tip penetrates through the core of the molecule and can distinguish core of the molecule and the brushes like side chains of these uh, extended polymer molecules. And that uh, particular nicely seen in, in, in stiffness and in the, in the modulus. Here it's interesting observation because when I will look on the quantitative numbers of the modulus in the, this modulus map where you see uh, a little bit brighter cores of the macromolecule then slightly darker surrounding, which is uh, the location where the side chains are. And then you have also the, some spots where uh, mica, just the, the, the substrate. And then the variation here is uh, it's a little bit more than I expected, but the, the reason is that the layer is very thin, and uh, I think effective models here strong, it also depends on the, on the substrate, which is a mica, and which is uh, a little bit, uh, it's a relatively hard material. And again, uh, here, uh, the, the comparison between the stiffness and modulus, adhesion and work of adhesion, is differences, uh, contrast is not much uh, different, and then the only value, that, of course, of the quantitative data. Uh, okay, let's go further. And now we come back to this uh, wonderful uh, addition to this microscope, uh, which uh, Alana introduced uh, to you in the first part, in the first uh, part of the webinar. But here I want to put your attention on the following here. That's, of course, we are uh, care about how sharp this probe are. And they are actually also made from silicon. The, uh, the TM, ICM, and TM images, which uh, micrograph you see on the left, they show that they are, uh, show us familiar around 35 nanometer opening angle. And also the apex of this probe 
it's around uh, what 10 nanometers that's what you see from TM picture and also uh, we have this uh, standard with spikes on the surfaces and you can use this uh, structure for evaluating tips and this uh, also uh, average results for the 10 props uh, showing on the right show that's uh, close to the 10 maybe 11 nanometers that uh, uh, show that this props uh, as uh, sharp as the regular silicon props and uh, they have no any problem with this and now we come uh, to the conclusion and uh, I just want to summarize that we introduce uh, NTMDT novel titanium microscopes which uh, I show a lot of application with that, all kind of the application is the most diverse set of the modes uh, available in our industry plus we have a really big plus its revolution head with multi probe cartridge and uh, therefore I think the community sh should enjoy the progress we we made in that uh, instrumentation and uh, by this I thank you for your kind attention sorry for some interruption but uh, I think will be useful to uh, get some uh, questions and maybe provide some answers in discussion thank you okay thank you Sergey uh, for this very interesting talk so the, during the talk we've got some questions, uh, so we can use the remaining time to answer to some of them. Uh, and uh, uh, so, so some of them uh, will be answered by Sergey, some of them will be answered by me. So uh, and uh, don't hesitate to uh, ask question in your uh, questions uh, panel or chat panel. Uh, we can. Uh, read them and uh, answer online or, or offline. Uh, uh, lately, together with the uploaded version of the uh, webinar. So, uh, the first question uh, is: uh, uh, What is the maximum scanning size of uh, this device? I think I, I can uh, answer it. So uh, technically, the uh, the AFM scanner is uh, 100 by 100 uh, by 12 microns uh, range, uh, and uh, uh, so so, so you, uh, you can get the AFM image within this uh, range. But uh, as uh, as uh, Sergey told, uh, uh, this microscope is fully automated. So together with this uh, single AFM scan. We can uh, make the automated uh, map of uh, the surface, so you can get up to five by five millimeters uh, stitched image, a stitched AFM image with a high AFM resolution. Also, another option is uh, uh, that uh, the optical microscope uh, and the sample mover is also automated so uh, in this case uh, you can get also the optical mapping of the surface with uh, just two micron uh, uh, optical resolution so you get like Google Maps you get uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the the optical map overlay your uh, region of interest and, and can cover it with the AFM resolution uh, and we will uh, uh, send later. We'll send you the link for the uh, for the movie which uh, shows you uh, which uh, will show this operation. Uh, so the uh, so yeah, I think uh, the, this is the question for you in hybrid mode. Is there any restrictions uh, restriction of on type of force constant of tip used? question oh uh, yeah that's a good question and uh, uh, there are definitely some restriction but I've seen this restriction with the tips uh, stiffness of 150 Newton per meter and higher and uh, 
It means practically I was using uh, all props starting from, uh, let's say, 0.1 Newton per meter stiffness uh, up to 100, 150. Than, I mean, a Newton per meter stiffnesses, and with this range, I, I don't see any 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 restriction. It also depends: are you using them in air or in liquid? In liquid, a little bit more more tricky because you need to eliminate the perturbations, which are caused either the ringing or the the uh, some lower force uh, variations but that can be achieved but generally I didn't see much uh, limitation and that uh, this particular range I specify you between 0.1 and uh, let's say 100 150 meter per meter. okay uh, thank you for the answer uh, so there, there, there are there are a few questions about the maximum uh, scanning frequency so uh, uh, this is uh, 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 this uh, this uh, this question is uh, uh, no uh, the answer for, for the question depends on uh, what is the, what the kind of sample we are using uh, what is the uh, uh, roughness of the sample but uh, like from my personal practice uh, I could get uh, speeds up to uh, 50 hertz meaning 50 lines per second but uh, that uh, again uh, when uh, when the such question is uh, is asked uh, so it should be specified which kind of sample for, for sure uh, it is not possible uh, using this uh, 100 micron scanner which is pretty a big range it is not possible to scan 8 uh, 10 uh, uh, micron roughness with the, this uh, speed of course uh, the flatter sample, uh, yes, uh, it becomes more and more, uh, speed, the speed becomes more uh, bigger and bigger. Uh, so I, th I hope uh, I uh, answered this question roughly. Uh, uh, Stas, I, yeah? yeah? I can add that it also depends upon the mode because uh, contact mode is you can scan much faster than in uh, oscillatory modes. Yeah, of course, because uh, in a, in the oscillator mode you depend you depend on the dynamics of the cantilever, and uh, uh, but yeah, uh, but uh, no, uh, the, usually to get faster in a synthetic mode, uh, one should use uh, cantilevers with very high resonance frequency, like uh, more than one megahertz. And this option is also available in titanium with a, a head uh, which you, where you can insert. Uh, standard cantilevers, uh, uh, like any commercially available tips. Uh, the next question is, uh, are the values you measure in hybrid mode absolute or relative? Uh, they are, I will say that they are quantitative value done in the frame of the particular model we're using. We're using uh, mostly DMT start to use now JKR and uh, of course that's in the assumptions we are making because so far most of the models are uh, pure elastic and uh, we, we know that the issue how to take into account uh, viscoelasticity and this is kind of uh, intriguing and, and, and uh, very important issue we start to make that uh, studies but not yet to provide you the, the consistent results but for what we do so far now in the frame of the modes and the frame of our characterization of the tip which include measurements of the radius and, 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 and uh, stiffness of the probe in this uh, in particular model then if you trust all these three measurements then there can be uh, even absolute measurements for these particular conditions Okay, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, maybe to two more questions. Uh, uh, can a demonstration be organized in any university, and what should be, uh, we do to get uh, one uh, set up? Uh, so, so the nearest event you, you will be able to uh, uh, to see the, the demonstration of titanium will be ACS conference in uh, in US in uh, which city this year? So Dallas, we, Dallas. Uh, in, in Dallas city, 
uh, but uh, in, in case you are you're really, really interested, you can uh, contact uh, uh, your nearest uh, uh, distributor of our production or contact uh, uh, directly our European, US or uh, Chinese or Russian offices and uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can arrange it uh, either in the office or either uh, on site. Uh, and uh, we are we are coming closer to the time limit. So the, the, there are several questions about uh, uh, how can we get the presentation uh, and the record of the webinar. So the uh, presentation and the uh, answers for the questions and the record of the webinar uh, will be available um, on our website in uh, uh, webinars uh, in the webinar section. If you go to our uh, main page, you will see a webinar section, and uh, in the archives, uh, archives uh, webinars, you will be able to find uh, the record and uh, the uh, corresponding material for this webinar. So uh, we uh, we have well, we're coming to the to, an, to an, 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 an end of our session. So thank you uh, very much. Uh, Thank you, uh, speakers. Uh, uh, thank you uh, very much for finding uh, time in your busy schedules to be with us today. Uh, thank you for listening. So, uh, after the webinar finishes, a survey window will appear in your internet browser. We'll be really grateful if you could spare a couple of minutes and answer a few questions. You can also leave uh, your additional questions and comments in the, in the survey in special window. And uh, the, these questions uh, will be answered as well. Also, you can find additional information about the product on our website. It's uh, www.ntmdt.com or www.ntmdt.ru. So the recording of the webinar will be uploaded next week. So thanks you once again for attending our webinar. And we look forward to seeing you at upcoming events. Have a nice day. Goodbye.